Hello there, everybody, and welcome today to the Pokemon Stadium 2 Draft League Championship. Uh, we're going to have the third place game first and then the championship. Before we get started, however, though, just a couple updates. Uh, as you can probably tell, this is the first video that will air with my microphone. It's a new microphone setup. Uh, I've had the microphone for a little while, but I've had a uh, heck of a time setting it up. Uh, and then once I uh, got some things straightened out, I uh, still didn't use it for a while. I'm not really sure why there, but hey. <laughs> um, so the audio quality hopefully will be getting better on this channel. Um, we will. I will be using this mic for now on. Uh, there are some videos I recorded before using this mic that still have not aired yet. But um, all future videos being made after this one will have the new mic. So, uh, bear with me there. All right. Today's matchups in the third place game, we have the Tampa Bay Steelix and the Minnesota Suicune. And then in the championship, we have the Pokemon Power and the Atlanta Firo. In the games, I will be controlling the Steelix and the Firo. At the very end, we'll go over the statistics, the updated statistics like I did in the regular season. And we'll probably pick an MVP, a least impactful Pokemon, and, um maybe award like best ratio like most efficient pokemon so uh we'll have those three we'll have an mvp a most efficient and a uh worst team member essentially uh and without further ado let's get into it i'll be right back with the first matchup all right ladies and gentlemen here we are with the third place game the tampa bay steelix and the minnesota suiku these teams split one and one in the regular season uh, granted, the team I controlled won both times, so uh, there's that. All right, here we go. All right, let's start with... Shuckle's not really bad against anything, because even the Suicune Shuckle could take a hit if needed. Yeah, I'm going to start Shuckle. Actually, you know what? Better idea. Let's start Quillfish. Because it can handle four of the five Pokemon. I uh, four of the six Pokemon. I don't know where I got five from. And if it is an electric type, we can switch Steelix in. Alright, here we go. The third place game. <clears throat> Bronze medal on the line. For anyone interested, future videos on this channel are going to be uh, new Pokemon Snap, Shantae, and I'm also working on finishing up the Cruising USA series. Um, so you'll have that stuff to look forward to. And a quick reminder early in this video, if you like what you see here today, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that nonsense, so I can keep making videos for you guys. All right, it is an electric type, so let's put Steelix in there. We can set up Sandstorm, because even if they switch, we we wouldn't get hurt. If they stay in, the only thing they're going to be able to do is either Roar, which would make us switch out again, or Quick Attack, which won't do much. All right, so Sandstorm first. All right, Suicune, huh? Well, we still get our free Sandstorm up. Sandstorm has started blowing. Going, Sandstorm. All right. What impact will this uh, let's switch in Quillfish. Because Quillfish can win neutrally by using Sludge Bomb. And for those that are wondering why I would Sandstorm before putting Quillfish in, while it's true that Quillfish and Blastoise will get hit, four of my six team members are good against Sandstorm, like they don't get hit by it, so um, so yeah, still worth it. And, and then if we have to switch, my uh, Pokemon we switch in won't, won't be, it won't be an issue. All right, minimize, because I'm not worried about Bubble Beam taking me out anytime soon. Ah, it raised its evasiveness. 
That's fine with me. Both of us did nothing. We're going to get hit by the sandstorm. All right, Sludge Bomb. I'm not going to do more than one Minimize because I know it'll probably put in an electric Pokemon after Suicune's gone. Huh, would have liked to see more damage out of it than that, but all right. Here comes Bubble Beam. Of course it hit. It's amazing that the Minimize strategy worked like week one and it hasn't worked again. <laughs> All right, we might be slower than it now, but Sludge Bomb should take it out if we get a chance to hit it. Two for two while we've got the Minimize up. Now we get a critical hit. All right, Quillfish takes out Suicune, but Suicune did a lot more damage on Quillfish than I was really hoping for. Okay, that's not the worst thing that could have happened. Well, it does have faint attack. Uh, Magnemite. Because in this generation, dark type moves don't do a whole lot to steal. I know it's going to faint attack, so my minimize doesn't matter. This way we can get Quillfish's speed back. Magnemite shouldn't get hurt much. Yeah. All right, first things first, Thunder Wave. That's fine with me. All right, since this is going to be a long battle of both of us not doing much because Umbreon's special defense is sky high, we're going to try for Supersonic for once and see if we can get it confused. There we go. Paralyzed and confused. It'll still hit me this turn. Okay, well, the paralysis saved us there. I was almost right. All right, we're going to try frustration first because its special defense is higher than its physical. All right, that did about as little as I thought it would. We'll go thunder from this point on. Really? One turn? It was only confused for one turn. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. All right, we got to try and land a less accurate thunder. This will be good. One for one, of course. Because when this game has accuracy drops, it mistakes it as, oh, it hits every time. Like when minimize doesn't cause a miss ever. I mean, I guess we go Thunder again. Since Frustration's not going to do a whole lot. Alright. Well, I mean, that's expected. I'm not upset about it. Thank goodness we paralyzed it. That gives Magnemite more of a fighting chance here with the low accuracy. Two for three, despite the very low accuracy I have right now. All right. How many thunder have we used? Four? Three? Okay, this will be four. I'm not going to go below five. If we miss the next two, we're just going to frustration our way until we beat Umbreon. I got to save some of those thunder in case I need it against, like, Zapdos or something. Wow, Paralysis is coming in clutch for us right now. All right, last thunder before I get conservative. All right, we're just going to go frustration. It's still... Got a good chance of missing since there's two sand attacks up, but since it's more accurate than Thunder, it should have a better chance of hitting anyway. Right. Oh, we got critical hit. That works. Okay. Magnemite takes out Umbreon. It also means Magnemite is not stuck in there anymore. All right. <clears throat> Magmar. I would sacrifice Magnemite and go for Thunder Wave, but um, since uh, 
Since our accuracy is so low, we'll probably miss Thunder Wave if we did survive the attack. So I'm going to go Shuckle. The reason I'm going Shuckle is since Entei's still there, I'm trying to save Blastoise if I can. I have other ways like Magneton to beat Zapdos, so I don't necessarily have to have Shuckle uh, for that. Of course we get the burn, but all right. Well, first things first, let's go with the Sandstorm. They're going to go for Confuse Ray and probably get it. All right, game, how much do you hate me today? Wow. All right, let's try this again. Sandstorm again. You're going to switch. You get the perfect start against me, and then you're going to switch, huh? Okay. Works for me. At least I get a chance to get Sandstorm off. That actually doesn't worry me as much, believe it or not. All right. We got lucky. We also had just one turn of confusion. The burn kind of sucks, but all right. Well, since Zapdos is in there, let's try Rollout. All right, come on. Thunder's supposed to be less accurate in a Sandstorm. It hits first try. Of course it did. Here comes our Rollout. It didn't do very much because we're burned and we have no attack. Sandstorm going to hit Zapdos a little bit. Uh, Shuckle getting burned was a real drag. Its whole thing is defense. Alright, well, it got a critical hit, but we only had six health, so I don't think it needed it. Alright, Zapdos, you can't do anything to Steelix, so let's put Steelix out there. I mean, you can rock smash it, but good luck with Steelix's high defense. Alright. You're probably going to consider switching in a raw, a fire type. Because right now you got two electric and two fire. That's all you got left. We're going to play it safe then and go rock throw. It'll be super effective on whatever is in there. All right, it's going to stick with Zapdos. Flash miss. That's good for me. All right. There's the Sandstorm. Another Rock Throw should take it out. Yeah, Blastoise is going to have to be key down the stretch since they have uh, two Fire types. Oh, move. And I have three Steel types <laughs> remaining. Same with Quillfish if it can outspeed. Oh, really? Oh, and the Sandstorm's gone. Are you kidding me? All right, set up the Sandstorm. Is on the off chance they're dumb enough to send out Raikou or something, the Sandstorm will help. Plus, Sandstorm will still help with uh, Magnemite and Magneton out there. Alright. What is the accuracy on Rock Throw? 90. Yeah. Alright. You are going to switch, probably. You're just going to do Flash. I can guarantee that. Uh... Uh, let's go with Magnemite, because if we could slow down, I don't, I don't think that Magnemite and Magneton are necessarily going to outspeed the fire types, and if either one of them was going to do it, it's probably Magneton. But if we could slow one of them down with Thunder Wave, that would make it a lot easier to try and take them down. Flash missed. Okay, so it was a safe switch in. The Sandstorm will take out Zapdos. All right, so Steelix with a knockout via Sandstorm. Okay, Magmar's back. I think he's rocking Fire Punch, if I remember correctly. I'm going to attempt Thunder Wave. We'll see who's faster. I assume Magmar, yep. Can we survive the hit? I don't think we can, but we'll see. We did not. All right, Magmar takes out Magnemite. Uh, 
Let's go with Magneton next. So I'm trying to save Steelix for Raikou. And uh, the Sandstorm will chip away at the Magmar here on this turn. So if I put Quillfish out there, Sandstorm's going to take it out. So we'll go Magneton, and if it can survive a hit, we can slow down Magmar. I think Blastoise can outspeed the Entei. So if we can slow down Magmar, I feel good about my chances. All right, Thunder Wave. It's still faster. Do we survive now that you're a Magneton instead of a Magnemite? It burned us. That means we survived because it wouldn't have bothered to tell us we were burned if we didn't make it. That is big. Magneton paralyzes Magmar. Magmar takes out Magneton, but that is huge. That makes it a lot easier for my others to try and have a chance here. All right, we'll go Blastoise because it can survive a Sandstorm hit. All right, Blastoise, we just got to connect on one Hydro Pump, and Magmar should go down, especially after getting hit by Sandstorm twice. We're definitely faster because of the Paralysis. And there goes Magmar. All right. It's going to be Raikou, because their only options are Raikou and Entei. All right, good to know for if I need to put Quillfish in there now. All right, we're not going to bother with Sandstorm at this point. We're just going to Mud Slap away. Because all it can do is Quick Attack and Spark to us. And if it roars, it wastes its turn switching anyway, and we can just switch back in. All right, Mud Slap. You're going to switch. That's fine. That means we're going to have lessened accuracy on the Entei. All right. Mud Slap. All right. A less accurate Fire Blast incoming. Let's put Blastoise in and... Hope it misses, or if it does hit, that it doesn't burn us. They've burned us twice now between Magneton and uh, Shuckle, so I won't be surprised if it happens again. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Here it comes. Please miss. Of course it didn't miss, but again, at least we got lucky enough it didn't burn. Let's go Hydro Pump. We're gonna go stay in and go fire blast. It is faster, that's worth noting. Alright, Blastoise tanks it again. Hydro Pump. By the way, Entei two for two on Fire Blast after the um, Mud Slap. Alright, we're gonna play it safe here and just go Mud Slap. No need to go for Hydro Pump and accidentally miss or something. I think even with a burn we could take it out at six health. It missed finally. Here comes Blastoise. Entei goes down to Blastoise. All right, with that, it's just Raikou remaining. And we already know our strategy for this. I probably will get a Sandstorm up this time around just so that we can get rid of it faster. I could just sit here and Mud Slap it. But with Sandstorm and Mud Slap, we'll get rid of it more quickly. Save everybody some time. Because even, even if it switches us out with Roar and the Sandstorm takes out Quillfish, Raikou's still not going to have a way to beat Steelix. And with Flash, it, the accuracy doesn't matter with Sandstorm if it happens to land a couple Flashes on us. So... Yep. Boy, I wish my team would have battled like this last week against the computer. <laughs> of course, I should have picked Shuckle. I mean, I I regret not picking Shuckle last week when uh in that playoff matchup. All right. 
right, so we got Sandstorm and Mudslap going. All right. Just got to keep at it now until we win. All right, Mud Slap. Right. Really wish I had like earthquake on this thing, or heck, I'd even settle for dig. But no, we gotta play the mud slap sandstorm game. <laughs> if we had earthquake, we would won in like two turns. All right, mud slap again. All right, we got the hit despite the two accuracy drops we've had now. Sandstorm, and Raikou goes down. The Tampa Bay Steelix win three to nothing in the third place game. All right, not bad. Again, wish I would have had that performance last week, but uh, at least we get to end on a high note. All right. That was a good season for the Minnesota Suicune, and uh, I was very happy with my Tampa Bay Steelix at the very end. Winner of the Tampa Bay Steelix. Um, let me break out the bracket here so I can update the third place game in the bracket. All right. Third place game, the winner. The Tampa Bay Steelix, who are now 11 and 5. So that's the Suicune lost. And the Tampa Bay Steelix, as I just mentioned, won. All right, so now we've got our championship the Atlanta Firo at 14 and 1, and the Pokemon Power at 10 and 5. Um, it's going to be a tight one gonna be a tight one I'll be right back in just a moment after I get that set up all right ladies and gentlemen here we are we are here for the championship game between the Atlanta Firo and the Pokemon power it'll be interesting to see how this uh, ends up going here all right before we pick the teams I am having a bit of an uh, of a delay here so hang on just a moment all right we're back well, maybe not. Just a moment. All right, we're back again. <laughs> Some technical difficulties there on the computer aspect of it for once instead of the Elgato. It's uh, having some issues for some reason trying to play the last battle. All right, let's see. Uh, just a moment here. All right, I'm doing the best I can. I guess we're just going to have to fight through it. It's a shame that my computer has decided to do this in the championship game, of all things. Uh, let's see. So the Atlanta Firo gave me a strict set of instructions they wanted me to follow in this game. They wanted to lead Lantern. All right, just a moment. My, my computer is really driving me nuts right now. All right, we're trying again. All right, Lantern... We're going to have, uh, I guess after that it doesn't matter. We're leading with Lantern. All right. We're having uh, issues still with the recording, as you guys can see. All right, we got Lantern out there. I can now take the logos off the screen now that I'm done fighting with the computer for the moment. I don't know why it was having so many issues with that uh, startup screen. Like, right now it's not doing it, but it was having issues at the Pokemon Select screen for some reason. I don't understand why. All right. The Firo told me specifically they wanted to use Dugong against Dragonite, so we're going to switch. If anything bad happens, it's not my fault. I'm following orders. Oh, and a <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, it's working fine now. I don't know what the deal was. At the, apparently, the team select screen was too much for my equipment to handle, but the battle isn't. <laughs> All right, Aurora Beam. They're not switching. Well, okay. That's not great. Grant, I guess Dugong is technically super effective in one way or another against everything except for Gengar and Alkazam, who are kind of frail. All right, Dragonite survives. Now we get into the tough questions. Do I rest or do I go for the knockout? I guess I'm going to go for the rest. We'll go rest and hope for the best. Good hit by Dragonite there. All right, we're going to rest up. And we'll sleep talk and hope that we get a move we can work with. Wing attack again. Interesting that it's not switching. Our sleep talk. Oh! Oh, well, that's a mechanic that's been changed over time. Nowadays, you can't rest while you're in the middle of being asleep, but apparently in this game you can, so there's no bad option here. Dugong's either going to heal up or attack. Huh. I never knew it was like that in Gen 2. That's really broken. That's probably why it's not like that now. Rest again. All right. Well, does that reset the counter, or am I going to wake up this turn? We'll find out. No, it resets. Quit using rest. We've gotten sleep talk rest three times. Pick Aurora Beam or Waterfall. Come on. We're wasting our sleep talks. supposed to be random and it's been three turns in a row finally doesn't take it out of course it doesn't that's 38 so even so even another waterfall won't take it out so to take it out it's gonna have to be aurora beam all right now if you want to get rest that's not bad All right. This is this is very weird to me that you can do this back in Gen 2. All right, we only got five sleep talks left already, though, because it keeps resting instead of attacking. Oh, critical hit. That was a big one. Waterfall, we're not going to survive. I mean, we're not going to take it out with that, I don't think. All right, it's up to the game. What is the game going to have us do? Is there going to be another critical hit? Are we going to get rest? Are we going to actually have an attacking move? Let's see. Back-to-back -back critical hits. All right. Well, for the manager of the Firo that's watching this video, I, ha I mean, you saw what happened. I was not the one making it pick rest over and over again when it had ample opportunity to take out the Dragonite. Alright. Uh, Dragonite's very low on health. Let's put... Well, no. If we put Kadabra in, then they're going to put um, Houndoom in. Uh, let's put Firo in, because Firo's fast in this game. I think it's faster than Dragonite, so it should be able to get a hit off and take it out, and we can get out of there. All right, Drill Peck. Yep, we're faster. All we got to do is hit. And we did hit. All right, so Dragonite goes down. But Dugong being out, that's uh, that also makes things interesting because that means Lantern's the only thing that's uh, super effective on Golem, which of course comes out now. Well, this is a tight spot because we don't want to switch Lantern in because if it uses Magnitude and predicts us, Lantern's going to get hit hard. So we need to... 
Kadabra would probably be the best here, but if we switch it in now, it's going to get hit hard. Uh, let's go Mistrevis. That was the only one of the six Pokemon that I didn't receive specific instructions for. So I'm thinking that's kind of a wild card. I can just kind of do with what I please. Plus, we do have Pain Split if we take too much damage. We should be faster than a Golem. So let's go with that. Rock Throw. Okay, so Lantern could have been safe, but it just wasn't worth the risk. All right. Pain Split. That's fine. We'll Pain Split whatever's coming in. Get some damage off on whatever's coming in. All right. Okay, now we've got a safer switch to Snorlax or Lantern. Let's look at what they got for their lineup. I think Snorlax needs to be saved for later. Especially with Dugong gone, we need the bulk. So let's try Lantern. Because I know I have instructions from this person to put Firo in to attack Houndoom, but if we switch Firo in right now, it's taking a big shot. But if we can get a clean switch in, I will put Firo in. Yeah, see, Firo would have taken a lot more damage than that. All right, uh, we'll go for one Hydro Pump. If we miss, I might just go straight into the Firo. Come on. Come on, let us get the attack off. Please hit. Alright, and Houndoom goes down, so that takes away one of the Cadaver threats. Interesting again that they left it in when they could have switched Venusaur in. Now we get Venusaur, but... Uh, a little, too little, too late, really. Okay. Um, now we absolutely go to Firo. We can drill peck it. If they switch out, we'll drill peck whatever they switch in. Even Golem could take a big hit. I mean, it could take a decent hit. Well, as decent as a non-effective drill peck will be. Giga Drain shouldn't do a ton to us. Yep, there we go. All right. I think you're going to switch. I'm going to... Actually, Toxic would be better if I could call this switch on the Golem. Let's try Toxic. They are switching. If it's not Gengar, it's getting poisoned. It's not Gengar, so if the game doesn't pull a fast one on us, this 90% move should hit. Alright, Golem's poisoned. That'll help, especially since we don't have Dugong to work with now. Uh, Mischievous again. Alright. There's another rock throw. There's poison. We're gonna pain split again. There's magnitude. They got a five, so that's not gonna do a whole lot. Yeah, that's why I like Earthquake more than Magnitude. I mean, Magnitude 10 is more than Earthquake, and I think 9 is the same, but there's just too much chance of getting 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. Uh, Shadow Ball. Rock Throw instead of Magnitude this time. Okay. It went for the sure damage. Alright. Here comes Shadow Ball. 
It's not beat yet, but again, it is poisoned. Here comes Magnitude. Magnitude, okay, that's a knockout. All right, Golem takes out Mischievous. The Golem's gonna go down any moment now. Uh, with that being the case, actually not a bad time to put Snorlax in. Because unless it gets like a Magnitude 10, we should be okay. And even with that, I think we'll be okay. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to use a curse. You're going to switch out. Okay, well, you're just going to get poison damage the next time you come in. All right, this should be Gengar. Yep. Uh, all right. We're going to switch in Fero. I still find it funny. Uh, I know we're way into the battle, but I still think it's funny that uh, my computer was struggling with the team select screen, but it's not having any issue at all with the battles. Alright, we're asleep. You're gonna switch. I try I tried pursuit, but we're still asleep, so we didn't get the pursuit to work. Alakazam. Alakazam is also a uh, Pokemon that doesn't like getting hit physically. But um Well, Kadabra could potentially beat the Gengar. Snorlax would be useful against Alakazam. Uh, for Venusaur, we'd like to save Fero. Golem's still alive, but anything could beat it at this point. Let's switch in Snorlax. Maybe we can force him to switch back into Gengar. The trainer switching Pokemon. Psybeam, how much does it do? Oh, it got the confusion. Of course it did. Alright, Headbutt, you're going to probably switch, but I'm going to pick Headbutt anyway. Yep, okay. That's fine. We'll miss with the Gengar, and then we'll switch into Fero again. Snorlax hits itself. Alright, well the good news is also by switching it'll get rid of the confusion. Pretty good matchup so far, you'd expect so in a championship. Thief. Right, we'll try once again to wake up. I'm going to try Pursuit again. Nope, still not awake. Alakazam again. Alright, this time we'll do the same switches, but I'll call it... Instead of trying to headbutt the Alakazam, I'll call the switch and put Fero in on the same turn as Gengar switching in. Alright, I'm going to call you on switching game, put Fero back in. Alright, both sides switched as I thought. There's Gengar. So we'll get yet another chance to uh, wake up. 
Try and pursue it again. Still asleep. Come on, Firo. We can't keep doing this or Snorlax is going to get beat. It's going to get whittled down uh, by all those Psy Beams. Uh, They're eyeing each other warily. A Firo could be so useful against Venusaur, or maybe even Gengar late because of the speed difference. I said Gengar, I meant Golem. Uh, I guess I'm going to go Snorlax. I'll just try to do Fire Blast this time instead of switching to Firo because that's clearly not working. Because Lantern could be useful in that it could maybe paralyze Alakazam. But... Alakazam's faster, so we need a clean switch. A critical hit. Of course you got a critical hit. It should stay in. We'll see if it does. It does. It was smart enough. Alright, well, thanks for the poorly timed critical hit there, game. Alright, well, at least we get that clean switch I was talking about. Let's go Lantern. If they make any kind of switch, it'll just be the Venusaur, I imagine. Uh, Spark. Paralyze whatever we can hit. Maybe. Lantern survives and might barely survive another. We'll see. Critical hit. I would have preferred the Paralysis, but still a good hit. Spark again. Alakazam takes out Lantern. All right. Unfortunately, the for me, uh, there looks like there's going to be an upset in the making here. Uh, what do we got left? Technically, Kadabra outspeeds and could beat the other three Pokemon. If we can get by Alakazam, we have a chance. And, of course, Firo could contribute, too, if it ever wakes up. All right, we're going to go Kadabra and just go for Thunder Punch. It has Thief, but its physical attack sucks. Yeah. So we can survive another thief. We need 62. We did more than 62, so Thunder Punch can take out Alakazam. Alright. This is cutting it very close. Thief again. We survive. Here comes another Thunder Punch from us. Kadabra takes out Alakazam. All right, Kadabra is fast enough and hits hard enough. It could potentially take these out or at least limit them. So we'll see how this goes. Venusaur first, huh? If we're going Venusaur first, let's switch to Firo and see if we can get it to wake up. Because Kadabra could potentially one-shot some of these, but it's, it's a could and a potentially. It's not a guarantee. So if we can get Firo to wake up and help at all, that would make it more likely for Kadabra to win. All right, Firo, we need you to wake up here, buddy. Like, you've been asleep forever this battle. Wake up. Thank you. We have a chance. Here comes Drill Peck on the Venusaur. Didn't knock it out, but now it's in Kadabra knockout range. All right, Firo gonna go for the drill peck once again. There's the shot. Oh, 
Firo takes out Venusaur. All right, we got Golem and Gengar versus Kadabra and Firo. Here's Gengar. Go for Drill Peg. There's Thief. 49, so we might even survive another one if Drill Peg doesn't get the job done here. All right, ooh, that's close. I don't know if another Drill Peg will take it out. Gengar is the only one. Oh, I was gonna say Gengar is the only one left that could potentially outspeed Kadabra. All right, Gengar takes out Firo. All right, can Kadabra pull off the the comeback here, or is there gonna be an upset in the championship? The battle, in my opinion, is gonna come down to who's faster of these two, because I know Kadabra's faster than. Golem. So this is the championship right here. Who is faster? The answer is Kadabra, which means the Atlanta Firo, unless something really bizarre happens, are going to win. Kadabra takes out Gengar. What a match this has been. What a match. Right, here comes Golem. There should be no possible way the Golem can win here, but we've seen some crazy things on this game. Psychic. There's the command. There's the attack. Does it hit? It should. It does. And the Atlanta Firo are victorious. What a battle. That is the kind of battle you, you expect to see in the title game. What a battle. Both people, both managers did a great job picking their teams or we wouldn't have gotten a battle like that. Uh, so congratulations to the both of them. Um, so congratulations, the Pokemon Power for your second place finish in the league. That's very well done, well deserved. And congratulations to the Atlanta Firo, the 2021 Pokemon Stadium 2 Draft League champs. Final record of uh, 15 and 1. I'll be right back in a moment to fill out the bracket, show the final standings and the final statistics. I'll also name the league MVP, the league's worst Pokemon, and the most efficient Pokemon. I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there's your final standings for the season. The Atlanta Firo, 15-1. and one, They get the gold medal or first place. Pokemon Power come in second for the silver medal. Tampa Bay Steelix get the bronze. Uh, some really good teams this season. Um, but without further ado, let's go through some of our final statistics. Quillfish led the Steelix as well as Magneton. Kadabra and Snorlax led the way for the Firo. Suicune and Zapdos led the way for the Suicune. I'm just doing the playoff teams. We know how the others finished. Ponyta, um, Nidoking finished as the leader for them. Golem and Moltres being the leaders for the power. All right. Without further ado, let's get to some awards uh, for some of the Pokemon this season. All right. First thing we've got, we have... Here's the following award, awards. We have the MVP, the KO's leader, most games played, most efficient, and least efficient. For the least efficient Pokemon, the winner is Meganium for the We Are the Ma Champion. Meganium had four knockouts and 12 feints on the season. Now, the I should have said this first. The ruling for these uh, awards is that the Pokemon has to still be on the team, and it has to have actually played at some point. Otherwise, it could have been one of the many that didn't play this season. All right. Next up, Mo uh, we'll do Games Played. The Games Played award goes to Suicune for the Minnesota Suicune. It made an appearance in all 17 games. 
So uh, Suicune gets the most games played. Most efficient. There was quite the battle here for most efficient between Kadabra and Charizard. Charizard hasn't played as much, but hasn't lost. Kadabra, while not playing in every game, has uh, been very effective when it has played. But, all in all, most efficient went to Charizard. Seven knockouts, no feints, and it's three appearances. Next up, the KO's leader. To my pleasant surprise for my Tampa Bay Steelix, I thought the KO's leader would be Kadabra or Snorlax. In reality, the KO's leader was Quillfish this season with 21 knockouts. So Quillfish getting the most knockouts on the season. And without further ado, the MVP of the league, I don't think anyone needs me to tell them who it was, especially after watching the end of that championship battle. The MVP is Kadabra. Kadabra finished with a stat line of 19 knockouts to 5 feints in only 12 games played. That's crazy. Um, I don't think there was anyone even close. Nitto King had 17 knockouts. It was close. Um, again, Quillfish with its sheer amount of knockouts was a candidate. Even Snorlax on Kadabra's team was a candidate. Uh, those were our big four. But um, really the argument is that you can make a case for any of the other three being the runner-up. But uh, you can't really make that strong of a case for Kadabra not not being the MVP, especially with it getting, um, was it three knockouts? Three knockouts in the championship game. So uh, Kadabra is the MVP. And once again, the Atlanta Firo are the champions. Uh, let's get their logo up here again. The Atlanta Firo are the champions. Congratulations. Uh, you guys deserve it. You were the champs. Just uh, going to throw you around here to celebrate. Yeah, Firo. All right. Uh, I look forward to doing this again. We haven't decided if our next season is going to happen next year or if it'll happen this year with just different rules for another league run. But um, regardless, I'm going to put you up there. There we go. We are going to do this again at some point in time in the future. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys have any ideas, any suggestions. Should we do the same format? Should we do Little Cup? Should we do a Switch League? Um, let me know what you guys think, and uh, we'll take that into consideration as we figure out what we're, how we're going to do the format for next season. We might have more teams, less teams. Um, I know Millennium Jest, a, a fellow YouTuber, has said that he's all in on it next season, so uh, that'll be interesting in itself to have a fellow YouTuber in on it maybe we'll get a couple more in here uh but again as i said earlier in the video if you liked what you saw today like comment subscribe ring the bell do all that youtube nonsense and i'll be happy to bring more videos to you guys in the future uh stay tuned for um some po new pokemon snap videos of mine that'll be coming out this week um my air times uh my days i like to air videos are sunday tuesday thursday saturday and uh just keep an eye out for those with some Shantae and some Cruising USA mixed in in between. Uh, the big thing on my channel I'm trying to do, I'm trying to complete series I've started. So we're going to start with those three. And then uh, it'll probably take longer to complete Pokemon Snap. Um, I'm starting to realize that's a very long series. But when Shantae and Cruising USA wrap up, uh, I will move on to other projects such as Paper Mario, etc. that we've already started. And I will uh, finish those up before introducing more new games to the series. At least that's the plan. Uh, a new one might squeak in here and there. Uh, so anyway, again, thank you all very much for watching. This has been a very exciting season. I really enjoyed doing this. I've always wanted to be in some sort of Pokemon Draft League, and it was really fun. Even though I didn't win, it was really fun to get to do this finally. Uh, I'll see you next time with uh, more videos, and I'll see you next time we do a Pokemon League. All right. Bye-bye.